Hello everybody, welcome to the Tourney Talks podcast. Today we'll be talking about spooky stuff that has happened to me or to my guest, which will show up later. So this isn't really a spooky thing, but I just want to talk about it because when I was little, no one ever believed in me. Well, it's kind of spooky, I guess. So the spooky thing that happened to me was I lived uh, by, I think it was a trailer park. I haven't been there in forever now, but I think I lived by a trailer park by the car dealership going out to mission. And when I was little, I would, I'd mess around outside all the time. I lived with my mom and my sister and my brothers. Or I guess it was only my one brother at the time. But, um... So I was playing under, like, this bridge. And... It was, like, rocky. And there's water at the bottom of it and stuff. I was playing with either my brother or my sister. Or I could have been alone. I honestly have no crystal clear memory for that except for the like spooky-ish thing that happened there um the spooky thing was like spooky yeah uh, but it happened like like I was laying in the rocks and I just looked over like I was playing like I don't know I was, and I was like just laying there I was like playing in the rocks like this. I kind of like looked up and on the other side of the bridge where the sun was like shining down on it, I seen a little crocodile or an alligator come out from like the weeds and like jump into the water. It was very small. Maybe it was a child. And I vividly remember that, but no one in the whole world believed me. We don't have uh, alligators in uh, over here. Like, bro, I don't care. I seen what I seen. But yeah, no one believed me. No one at all believed me. Not my mom, not her boyfriend at the time. And now my sister kind of doesn't even believe me. She said she thought it was, it was a little alligator, but we don't have them here. Like, dude, I know what I've seen. Maybe it was like a skinwalker as an alligator. And so I could have like double died because the alligator could see me and ate me up. Or that skinwalker could see me and ate me up. But I'm right here, so I think I'm good. Another spooky thing that happened to me was when I was like very little, I was playing with my, with my aunt. She's like two years older than me, I think. And I'm not sure if this was a dream or a real thing that had happened to me. Cause like, I think about it and I'm like sure that it was real. But when I really think about it, I'm the only one that ever, like, brings it up or thinks about it. So maybe it was just all in my head. Maybe I'm insane. Maybe I belong in an asylum. An Arkham Asylum from Batman. But... Oh, um, but... Basically, me and my aunt were playing... Like just doing little kid stuff. Like we're playing with these like with this little like grid thing. It was like a blue little grid square. Flat one by one. Then we had little cubes. This little toy plastic cage. We're playing with that. Very small. And then we were like just you know, just running around in the living room and stuff. In the kitchen a little bit. And then we like like heard someone like whispering. Like whispering, you, like 
I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna try to do voice. That's just cringe. It probably cost me. Like, no. But anyway, uh, like we whispering, it's saying, in my memory, I'm pretty sure it's saying something like, "You are a girl," and I know it doesn't sound scary at all, but like I swear it was. Like I don't think it's that scary now. Like when I think back on it, it might have like been my uncle hiding somewhere, like whispering that. I don't think so because I don't think my uncle was around at the time. But you never know, you know. Uncles be like that. But that that whispering, like, like I remember that. Whenever I think of a spooky story, that's like one of the first things that pops in my head. Um. And I'm not really sure if it's a dream or not, but I think it was real. I'm pretty sure it was real. I could just go ask my aunt. She lives like right outside my house in a little uh, little RV. But she might not remember. The cat just jumped on my back. Um. And it came. The whispering came from from the laundry room so it, like, I, and the, I know, as a little kid I was like deathly afraid of the laundry room it was always pitch dark it was always cold and then that whispering like that that messed me up from going in there for a long time so that was another spooky story another spooky story that happened in the room here was my uncle and again involving my uncles and my aunts this time they were playing hide and seek, I think. And they were just playing. They were very small and tiny when, they, when this happened, they told me. Saul told me what it is. Um, and anyway, my uh, cousins were playing. And, or not my cousins, my aunts and uncles were playing. They were like very little when they were doing this, they told me, or Saul told me. And in this house, in this current house that I live in right now, they're playing like hide and seek, I think. Or tag, maybe? Hide and seek tag? No, I think it was just hide and seek. And they were, um... Wow, I'm kind of a bad storyteller right now because I don't remember all the details. I'll probably remember after. Maybe even while I'm sitting here in the classroom, having to listen to my own voice. But... I remember that uh, he told me they're just playing around, messing around, being kids, playing hide and seek. Then they went into the room down the hallway at the end of the house on the right, which used to also be my grandma's room. And my grandpa or uncle Eric's room and also his wife Melissa and their son Eric is that the whole tribe in here anyway um, they're playing around and they went into that back room on the right and so I think it was Saul or Sam I don't remember the details now but he told me what I remember him saying is that he saw the shadow of a person on the ceiling or at least by that dresser and he thought it was the no he thought it was like Sam or Nolan my uncles and he said he got them but they didn't move or anything and after a little while, he left the room. And when they're done playing, later he asked them who was hiding in that spot or whatever, or how'd they get up there, or something like that. And and none of them knew what he was talking about. They thought he was crazy. No, they didn't think he was crazy, but uh, they were all like spooked, I guess. The cat just jumped on my back. And they were spooked. And that's pretty.
pretty much like the story, I guess. I don't know. It's like I probably don't sound. It probably don't very sound very spooky to you, but like the way Saul would tell it, he'd like, creep you out, creep you out if you were like in person, probably. I can't. I don't think I can tell you a spooky story. I'm too. I, I say too many O's. I've got the voice for you, but I think. So this is my guest, my grandma, Paula. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Paula Anatoy, and I'm Jacob's grandmother. All right, so since we're talking about spooky stuff, um, Julie just told me something that'd be like pretty interesting that I don't think I heard about, but Julie said there's a spirit gate behind her house or something like that. Yeah, there, well, a lot of different cultures believe in, like, doorways or passages along, um, like, to the other side, like, wherever ghosts dwell, or, I guess, like, heaven, or, you know, like, a place maybe even purgatory, um, but there's, in our culture, we believe that there's this thing called um, the uh, Chanku Wanagi, Ghost Road, and um, that's where the ghosts travel to get, there. there's a road and it ends up going to the Milky Way. And so whenever we die, these ghosts travel along the ghost road until they make it to the Milky Way and then they go across and then they never seen again. You know, they just stay there. But um, there's supposedly a ghost road um, behind our house. When I was little, down by my, my grandma's house, there used to be a ghost road. And there used to be people there. Like, when I was little, me and my brother, Gary, and one of my cousins, well, two of my cousins, and, um, we were walking down the driveway and it was at night and um, and my uh, my grandpa Sylvan was standing at the at the and he couldn't hear he was deaf so he had a hard time talking so he did a lot of hand motions and he didn't really know sign language but we knew what he was talking about by the way he would gesture his hands yeah so um we got to the front of the driveway and he started waving his hands around and he's like stop you know and he was like you guys you know you guys can't come here you know stop and he was trying to make us go to my uncle's house and we were like you know what's going on and we just we were looking at the house and we're like why can't we go in and he was like stop and he was like even like pushing us and then he was like sliding backwards because he didn't want us to go and um, we looked at the garage and and in the shadows you know like when leaves are blowing around and then in the shadows of the leaves blowing around on the garage door there was a man and he was in the shadows and just the way the wind was blowing and making the leaves move, his arms and legs were moving like he was walking towards us. And um, we were looking at him and, and we all saw him and we just stopped and he was like, and he was saying, he was pointing at the man and he said, he wants you. <laughs> and we're like, 
And and then Gar Gary's like, do you see that? I said, there's a man there. And right when we said that, it was like really windy, so we were kind of yelling, you know, at each other. Do you see that? You know. And just when we saw that, it looked like the guy's arm started going like this, and he started waving at us. And then he was going, like, come here. So we started walking towards the garage, and Sylvan was saying, no, no, he wants to take you. He wants you. And we still kept walking, because we were like, that's so weird, you know? And we just wanted to see what it was. And it didn't look, it looked like a real man made out of shadows of leaves. And um, when we got up to the, to the garage, even though we were standing in the way, he was still there. You know, like our shadows were there, but he was still there. And he had his hand up like this on the garage. So I put my hand on his hand just to see if it would move. And it didn't, it just kept you know, it just stayed up there. So I had my hand on his hand. And then Sylvan came and just knocked my hand off. And he said, don't do that. He wants you. And then he was like really freaking out. And he was like pushing us away. And then he grabbed us all and drug us in the house. But So we have a gateway like that behind our house right now? Yeah, it's like, I don't know where it is, like if it's right behind the house or way on the hills. I think that'll be it. Okay. So, thank you for being a guest on my podcast. You're welcome. And I guess you're free to go now. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank okay. you for sharing your stories. Yep, bye. Goodbye. <laughs> So we talked about spooky experiences and stories that have happened to us. Me, my grandma Paula, and even my uncle's stories that he told me. We talked about a scary leaf man. We talked about an alligator maybe. We talked about scary whispers I heard. And um, yeah, that's pretty much about it. Later.